Welcome everyone to the Knitting by the Sea podcast. My name is Lisa. I am Saratoga Knitting on Instagram and on Ravelry, and I welcome you to my home. I live in a very old house in Marblehead, Massachusetts, which is a little harbor town just north of Boston. So today we're going to do several things. I have a few finished objects. I have a lot of works in progress for you um, today. And then I'll talk a little bit about some upcoming projects and we'll do some updates at the end. So let's get started. Finished objects. Today I have two to show you. I know it's been a while since I've podcasted and I've, I've just been working on so many works in progress that I haven't actually finished too much, but I did have two to show you today. The first one is very, very special. I'm, I'm really excited about this one. I certainly can't wear it at this time of the year, but I'm very excited about it. This is called the Powell Wonderful uh, um, Cowl, and it's by Tanya Anderson, who's the sampler girl on, uh, on Ravelry and Instagram. And I have been making this with some very, very special, special yarn. And it's called Gilhag Gilhagi yarn. I'm not sure if you can read that or whether I'm pronouncing it correctly, but this is from Iceland. And this is uh, some, uh, some, some yarn local to, to, to Iceland. They don't, um, they don't export this. So um, Sophia was able to get this for me when she went on her trip in March. And I actually, have, I had, she gave me two skeins of this. So I've used about half of one in, in, in this project I'm going to show you. And then I have this second skein left. So that's really pretty exciting. So this is just a little bit of a little lovely cowl that I've made here. And it is just so beautiful. I'll get you up close to it. So it's really such a pretty cowl. And this yarn is super soft. It hasn't been blocked yet. There still are ends to, to weave in, but I haven't, uh, I have not blocked this yet, but I did want to show it to you today. I'm really super happy with this. And I love the little pops of color. I'm using this beautiful red yarn, which is from a, um, a, a local farm. And I'm, I just love it. it was, it's just the perfect, the perfect mix for, um, for, for this little for this little cowl so i'm super happy for this i'll get it blocked up and ready when <laughs> the weather turns a little bit cooler than it is than it is is today um so i still have about a half of a skein left and then i have as i said i have the whole other skein so i think what i'm going to do is make a a pair of mitts to go to go with this fingerless mitts to go with this i always like to have fingerless mitts when i'm um, traveling in on the bus on the in the um in the winter time so and i'm thinking i'm going to make um, what are called the magic faraway knits i'll put a picture up here and those are by katie jones of the bakery bears and they're just a they're just a cute little um a cute little mitt i'm not going to use she uses some self-striping or she uses a few um i think she uses a few little minis that she she does to do some changes in the color but what i think i will do is i will um, i'll just use the same two colors and i'll just i'll just alternate them um, as well and use the red as the accent so it it, um, it will match this and so i'm looking forward to that i have not cast it's the only thing i haven't cast on yet no it's not the only thing i have something else i haven't cast on yet either but uh, i'll be i'm looking forward to, um, to these it's just this is lovely lovely yarn but it's a little bit it's a little bit um well it's a little warm here this week <laughs> I haven't, I haven't really cast, cast this, uh, this on. This is a real woolly, woolly wool. So, but I am looking forward to that and you will see that you will see the pair together when, when they, when they are finished before the fall <laughs> season comes. My second finished object is of course, a pair of socks. Um, these are again, the simple, uh, simple Skype socks by Adrian Koo. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and I'll link it down in the, in the, um, in the show notes at the bottom, but I just love this pattern. I, I, this right now is kind of my go-to pattern um, and here, here it is. Oh, I'll put, put it this way. Show this way. I do have two. So I did complete the pair and this is knit from Lang, uh, Jawal Magic. That's the, the tag from the yarn. And this was just really fun, super fun. I have had a couple of uh, balls of this um, that I got from a sale at my um, local yarn shop, Marblehead Knits. 
And I just really had fun. This is just, a, it's not self-striping. So you don't know where the stripes are going to happen, but I really, it's one of those things where you just enjoy the color, uh, the color change because you can see it coming. So you keep, keep going. And this pattern is extremely, extremely mindless. Once you understand what you're doing, you can just keep, on, keep on going. You really don't need to look at the pattern at all. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with these. Um, these are going to go into my, my bag of, of uh, 12 socks. Um, the bakery bears are kind of running a just a, a really low key um, knit twelve socks for the for the year, so that in in January you can pull out your bag and you have twelve new pairs of socks. I probably won't make twelve, but I'm going to do that. So any socks that I'm making this year, and I think this is mm, probably I don't know. I'd have to look at the bag, but it's either my third or my fourth pair of of socks. So I, I should have a good number before the before the uh, before the end of the year. Uh, if you haven't watched me before, um, I commute into Boston. Luckily, I'm only doing that two days a week now. Um, but on those two days, I do have about a 20 to 30 minute bus ride. And that's usually what I will do is I will take my pair of socks and I will knit on them on my bus ride into work. And then it's just another small project I can just tuck in my bag and then I can work on them at lunchtime too, if I, if I want to want to do that. So I get a lot of bus sock knitting time. And that's usually when I like to do it. And that's why I have lots of, lots of socks. Um, I am not particularly precious about socks. I know some people are very precious about them. I am not, I, I only make socks for myself. Um, my husband um, is not really interested in wearing <clears throat> wool socks. I, we've tried to convince him, Sophia and I have tried to convince him, but he's really not, you know, he's just a one athletic socks and, and that's, that's really it. But that's fine because that means I don't have to knit <laughs> socks with a you know size for us men's size nine um but i also don't knit socks for anybody anybody else sophia knows how to knit if she needs socks she can knit them herself um so i'm just knitting socks for myself so really i just in the winter time i wear a different pair every day and um when they wear out they wear out because i have plenty in the rotation to um to 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 do that with so i i don't bother with any mending or or, or any of that um if i have to throw out a pair of socks gives me an opportunity to go and get some more yarn or figure out what, what yarn I'm going to pull out now to, to try the next one. So, um, I, I don't have, I don't have a pair of socks on the needles right now, but you'll see what I am doing in, in, in works in progress. When I'm finished with that particular project, which is a small one, um, I'll go back to, um, I'll go back to making, uh, my next pair of socks. But so I think, I think that's all that I've actually completed. So now let's move on to some works in progress. Works in progress. As I said, I have quite a few. I think I was, I think I've been counting them up. I think I have about five. Oh my goodness. Who, who is this person? Um, I, if you, if you, if you've watched before in the past, I usually tried to keep my, uh, my projects to three. It was really a comfortable, um, a comfortable amount for me, including the pair of socks that I would use uh, going to, um, going in, into work. So I usually have, I usually have a sweater a larger sweater project, a pair of socks, and then something kind of in, in between, a cowl or something like that. Um, but that has um, that has changed, and mostly it's because I'm doing some really long term, uh, really long term projects this time around. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is just a fun one. It's called the Caddy Corner Hand Towel, and it's by Pearl Soho. So that's a free pattern by Pearl Soho. Um, I have some really beautiful <clears throat> um, Rama Garn Polini. It's kind of beat up here, but it's Polini, and I think. I think it's a um, a blend of 50% cotton and 50% linen. And this is just the one of the skeins of it. I have several different colors. Um, we, uh, I participated, um, you'll see a lot of these, a lot of these projects I've been, I've been participating this year with um, uh, Patricia from uh, Nitography. She's had uh, lots of different, um, she's had, has an epic, um, an epic project along, which I'll show you. And then we had a special, uh, a special kind of a, a mini uh, knit along for the Easter season, because that's really big in, in Norway. And, uh, and during that, we, we, she gave us some really beautiful old fashioned, um, or I shouldn't say old fashioned, but old patterns for um, hand towels and dishcloths. And I made a couple of those. And then I actually ran into this pattern and I, I have, I have, Quite a few of these. I have five, five or six colors of different colors of this, and so I thought I would. Uh, this would be a good project for me to do because I can actually take this. This is my on the bus project for right for right now. It's really easy to do, and again, it's one of those projects that when you um, 
once you know what you're doing, it's super easy. And of course, I'm in the middle of a row. I hardly ever do that. I must have I must have put it down. Um, must have been working on it this morning and then just put it back in the bag when my husband came down. But it's really it's really beautiful. It it starts out um, starts out on the uh, you, you know you're basically just starting at the bottom and knitting a triangle and then you start to move inward. So it will be a long uh, a long rectangle at the end. And you do a large color block at the beginning and then you put start putting in the stripes. So I'm on my second stripe pattern. I don't really remember how many are in stripe patterns are in in this. I'll just kind of go along. I have like I said, I have four or five colors. If I need to repeat a color, that's perfectly fine as well. But it's really pretty. It is a um, it's some kind of a honeycomb pattern. I don't remember what it was called in particular, but it, it's just it's really beautiful. You're you, you, on one row, you're knitting and then um, knitting underneath the the, the stitch. So that's where you're ended up ending up um, pulling up two stitches and it just makes this really beautiful, uh, beautiful honeycomb pattern and it's offset because you're increasing on one on one side. So you're always uh, using an odd number. So it's different every time you um, you go to do that honeycomb pattern. Um, and these are some pretty I think this is a little stitch marker that Sophia brought me back from Iceland. Super cute. But this is really fun, really easy, and it's light. It's nice for now because all of a sudden, you know, it went from rainy and cool to hot and humid. Um, so this is really nice to have something with just cotton and linen uh, to work on um, on the bus when I go in. Uh, so really, really happy with um, happy with this one. So like I said, I have four or five colors of this, and I'll just keep on uh, keep on going. And uh, I'm going to have a really nice um, hand towel at the at the at the end of it. Uh, and I'm really, I'm really super happy with, happy with that. It's nice, a nice light project to be working on. The second project that I will show you is the epic make along that, that I'm participating in, as I said, with Patricia of Knitography. We have a wonderful, wonderful group of, of knitters. She, uh, um, Patricia lives in Norway. She's, um, she's uh, American by birth. She was, um, I think she, she lived in Texas for a long time, but she moved to Norway 25 years ago. Um, she uh, got married there, had her kids there. So she's been, a, um, I think, a first grade teacher. And now she's retired from teaching. So she has a small flock of, um, of heritage sheep that she that she takes care of. And she has a little uh, she has a little shop um, that she makes some different products from from uh, the trees that grow on uh, grow on their land. And the biggest thing that she does is that she has a series of different courses that she offers each year, and they are all um, using traditional Norwegian patterns, traditional no Norwegian yarn, and she just takes you from start to finish in, in the projects. And during that, you know, the, the actual classes are, are taped or videotaped. So once you purchase a class, you can go back and watch it anytime. But she also has uh, monthly or biweekly get togethers. So you can come on and she'll do a Zoom call and everyone can show their uh, show their different projects and their pro um, the progress that they're that they are making. She has individual ones for the individual uh, patterns that, that she has going each um, each um, each season, really. Um, in my uh, sister in law, Tracy and I did one of her original um, Norwegian mitten classes together, which was fantastic. And then Tracy has gone on to do a couple of more, um, a couple of more of her classes, actually knitting sweaters. I have not, um, but I probably will be. And I'll, I'll talk about that in my upcoming projects. Anyway, so for um, in the beginning of the year, Patricia set up, um, she just does what she calls an epic project, an epic year long project every year. This year it's a blanket and it is a traditional, it, it's not tra necessarily traditional, but it's called an upled in Norwegian. And it is just a very large blanket that you can have at home. I guess in Norway, most people have always, oh, I shouldn't say most people, she's pretty much everyone always has a blanket in their car, which is a, not a bad idea. It's a very smart idea, actually. Um, and so she was knitting this traditional pattern and it um and I don't think the pattern actually is available anymore I think it's from one of the yarn companies I'll link a picture I'll show a picture of it here and I think you can see it in Ravelry but I don't think the pattern necessarily is available any anymore and Patricia basically just wrote it wrote it out for us and you you just you, you'll see when I bring it up <clears throat> you basically just knit um cast on however many stitches that you want to cast on I think I think that um I can't remember whether it needs to be a, whether it needs to be an even number or an odd number. 
maybe it doesn't, maybe it doesn't matter. I can't remember, but maybe it's an odd number, but um, anyway, so you just cast on really, she, she gave us an idea of what, of what you would do. Most people are doing it in, in the, the um, Rama, the fingering weight yarn. And I cast on fewer stitches because I am using all hand spun for my background color. And my hand spun is not usually, sometimes it's fingering weight, but not usually fingering weight. It's just a little bit a little bit thicker than fingering weight. So what I'm doing is holding the, um, the realmer double. So I, it's already, it's pretty massive and it will be very heavy. It was really very, very long, but I didn't, I just thought I probably didn't need to have it super wide. <laughs> I did also didn't want to run out of the yarn, the, the realm of yarn that I, um, that I did have, um, uh, because I'm holding it, holding it double. Um, so basically what you end up doing is you, 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 it's all, it's all, um, garter stitch. So you're just knitting back and forth, knitting back and forth and you knit, um, I think what it, what is it here? You start out with, um, pretend to my hand, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So six garter ridges to start. And then you do a series of three color stripes and then you do six garter ridges, another three color stripes, six garter ridges, and another three color stripes, six garter ridges. and then what I decided to do at that point was do is to change after my first, my three color stripes, I then am changing the, the background color. So I moved into blue, um, some blue uh, hand spun that I had. And then after that, I moved back into some light brown hand spun. And then after that, back into the, into the blue, you can see it's pretty, it's pretty massive. And now I'm using uh, this lovely deep, dark, um, dark, gray for the for the background and then the the stripes are all rama uh, rama yarn um so it is it's actually massive our goal is to do th one section or three stripes each month so um i so i've done you know january february march april may june and i am in the middle i'm almost done with um almost done with july now so as you can see, this is only halfway there. So it will be extremely, extremely um, hefty, a hefty blanket, I will say. But I've already, uh, you know, Mark has already like put it on his lap and going, oh, I, you know, this might be mine. I'm like, yeah, you can have, you can use this. I mean, we're just going to have this probably on the, uh, just have it on the, you know, on the couch and anybody who wants to grab it can. It, it's a little, it, it's a little bit scratchy, but it's super warm. Um, <laughs> I, ha I haven't worked on this in a couple of weeks because it's just, it's massive as you can see. And it's, it's, I know it's going to be incredibly warm in the winter time, but it's really, really hot right, right now. But that's really, I mean, um, you know, and Patricia told us she anticipated that that would happen. And that's usually what she does is she kind of just like, will throw it away, not throw it away, but kind of maybe put it aside for a little bit in the summer and then pick it back up. As soon as it starts to get, feel a little bit cold, you're like, oh, I need to go back to that, go back to that project. So that's our goal is to complete this, this, um, this project uh, for the year. And then in December, you'll have a beautiful, beautiful blanket to add to your, add to your collection. And one of the other things that I thought was genius, and I, I'm, you know, one of these things I would never have thought of it, but, you know, you have to, it, it's, it's pretty massive. And so you have, you do have a lot, you know, it's over 200 stitches, but you have a lot of weight on your, your cable here and on your, on your, um, on your needle. And once you start getting a lot of weight, it even gets heavier and harder to kind of maneuver the yarn around if you continue to use just one cable needle. So what she's told us that most of the um, knitters in Norway will do when they have something this size, they will have two sets of the same needle. And then you just do one row on one needle and the next row with the next needle. So you always have two cable needle needles going, only one obviously at a time. And it makes it so much easier to maneuver the the yarn, maneuver the project. You're not everything isn't always bunched uh, bunched up as it would be if you were trying to just continue to do this on one needle. So using two needles on a huge project like this, I thought that was genius. I'm like, that's that's amazing. And as soon as she told us about it and I tried it, I was like that's great. I'm never going <laughs> going back if I have a a large project, um, a large project like like this uh, in the future. That is, it was really a great, a really great um, tip to 
to have. So I'm super excited. So yes, yeah, so this is our epic, our epic project for the um, for the year. Um, and I, I've tried to, you know, I, I, I'm um, weaving in the ends as I go. So I don't really, I'm not going to have a, a, a ton of ends at the at the at the at the end of uh, the project to, to take care of. And again, these are just, you know, it's, it's, it's Rama. So it's really very wooly. So I'm really just, you know, I'm weaving it in and then just knotting it at the end and, and just leaving that there. And that will, that will felt over time. The other thing that we're going to do to this at the end. So in December, what we will do is really interesting. And I think you can probably see it in some of the pictures on Ravelry is we will also take, our contrast yarn and we will weave it just one strand of it all the way up the project and I think there'll probably be four five six seven I don't really know how many of these upward weavings that we will do and then you can just leave the ends open so there'll be a little bit of fringe on the on either end and it's one of those things where again you would never think about doing it but looking at the pictures it's just a really makes a really nice accent to the project so it, it just puts it like a little bit over just makes it a little more, bit more elegant and interesting um so i'm looking forward to that uh to that as well um i'm hoping i'm going to make it through with the yarn that i have not that i have plenty of the hand spun but not of the of the realm i may need to order some more um to get through this project but i am really enjoying it not so much on a hot day, but on a cool day and, and on some of the evenings I am um, I am certainly enjoying it. And again, it's great TV knitting. You don't really have to think about it because basically all you're doing is just doing garter stitch and knitting back and forth. And all you need to do is count the ridges. So but there's a lot of rows because one ridge, of course, is two two rows of two rows of knitting. So super happy with super happy with this. It's just a it's a it's a fun project and it will be an accomplishment by the uh, by the end of by the end of the year. The second long term project that I'm working on is also a blanket. It's the year of the blankets for me for some for some reason. So this one, pull this out over here. This one is called My Favorite Blanket, and it is a year-long project that Kay Jones of the Bakery Bear is, is doing. Now, Kay is doing each, I think you do a um, four rows, eight times each. Each time she gives us a, 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 dip, a next the next part of the pattern um, each, uh, every, uh, every other month, I think is it on the podcast? But anyway, so she's giving us all the, the instructions. And right now for the last couple of months, we've had the same, the same piece. We're just doing, we're just repeating the same, the same um, pattern over again. She is, is combining this with dyeing some beautiful yarn for each of her different sections. And that is, it's coming out wonderful. It's beautiful. I myself am not really interested. I'm not interested at all in dyeing my own yarn. I don't have space for it. I don't have the proper equipment. It's not really something that that I, I have interest in doing. So what I am doing instead is just really using all my scraps. This is a uh, this is this is a blanket that uses two strands of fingering weight held together. So again, so it's just like a it's just like a scrappy blanket with all different kind of colors um, kind of colors in it. And I forget how far along we are, but we just got another. I'm into my next section, so I just started the next section. We just got another update. Um, update yesterday it's you can do it it's not like it's a, a secret or anything it's in it, they she gives you the um, information right in the um in the podcast um so um she's working on working on that so anyway so this is again it's kind of it starts out as a triangle and then works on the bias and it goes and it goes up so mine is just going to be this crazy crazy colorful lighter blanket than the than the than the other one so it's just my just lovely colors. I'm just holding two random fingering weight yarns together as I go. And we're up here. And this has some really pretty, has a little pretty lace section that we're working on. And there's three or four or five of these lace sections. It's the same, it's the same, um, the same lace section. But again, once you get to one part, you start, it's a, it will be a, again, it will be a rectangle, but we're starting to move over onto the bias now. So, so we're adding and, and decreasing on, on each on each side. So it's really pretty. I'm really happy with this one. This one isn't heavy. So this one is not, I'm not doing the two, I'm not doing the uh, the two cable needles because it's really, it's very, very light because it's really, it's all just fingering weight. That other blanket is super heavy and that works great. But this one I'm, I'm, I'm fine with, um, I'm fine with it. But yep. And I just have some, I just made up a, um, 
I just kind of made up a magic ball of, of different, um, different scraps that I have hanging around and I have more. So when I get done with this one, I'll just make up a new magic ball and kind of, and kind of go from there. So I don't have to, I'm not changing yarn um, at all. I don't really have to, um, the only ends I'm weaving in or as if I run, um, I, I was, I wasn't doing this way. This makes it, makes it much easier. So now I don't have any ends um, to weave in until I get to the end of, end of this ball. So super happy with them, um, with that one. So that is my favorite blanket by Kay Jones. And oh, I can feel the heat. <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting warm, it's getting warm with all of these blankets. I need to move on to something, something a little, um, a little bit lighter. Um, let me see. Okay, just had to stop for a <laughs> and get a little drink to cool off there. Um, in the middle, it's getting very, very humid today. We have the air, air conditioner downstairs in our living room and Sophie has one upstairs. And we do have one here for our bedroom, but we haven't put it in yet, of course. That's, you know, the last one to go in, but we do have a, we have a fan in the window right now, so it's not too, too bad, but it is, um, it's definitely feeling, feeling warm today. But anyway, so this is the, uh, the the next project I'm going to show you is the Roosty Tank Top. And this is by Ella Gordon. And I think it came out in one of the Shetland Wool Week uh, books that they they put out each year a couple of years ago. And I've always looked at it and wanted to to do it. It's been on my list of to, to do and I just never got around to it. And Dan of the Bakery Bears is actually uh, doing the Roosty Top 4K. He's making one for Kay. And that encouraged me to go back and take a look at it and say, look, I really, I really, I really want to do this. And the other thing is that um, we have made definite plans and have paid for uh, an Airbnb to go to Rhinebeck this year. So we will be there. And this is the goal. So this is one of the, my Rhinebeck sweaters that I want to, um, I want to use. It's, it's, it says it's a V-neck pullover or it's a round neck pullover. I can't remember, but it's a pullover. But it also means that I have to steep the <laughs> steep the arms and, and the neck as well. So I don't know why I keep doing I keep doing that to myself. But it's fine. I've done it. I've done it before. And the um, the other vest that I the color work vest that I uh, that I did um, several years ago. I use it all the time. I really really like it. So I, I need to add more of these to my to my wardrobe. So I'm very very happy. I am using basically the same colors that Ella chose on the original uh, on the original version and the yarn I'm using is Knitpick Palettes. Uh, I have I had quite a few of these colors already in my stash and then I had just had to purchase a few more so this was working out really well for me. So here is the it's the bottom. It's a bottom up. And it is really oop, flipped over there. It's really beautiful. I'm really, I'm super happy with it. Look at those bright, bright colors. Yep. So I, I have a ways to go, but you know, I have, I, I have until October. I'm not worried about it. And again, this is, this is, um, woolly yarn. So all I'm doing is when I'm doing the color changes, I'm just kind of hanging them and knotting them over here. Um, they're only, they color change really at only at one point in the, um, in the pattern, each row, row or two, that you're using you're using only two colors each each time each row even though they look like they're changing a lot so and again I'm, i will just um i will just knot these and trim them and they will just felt in i won't even i won't even need to i won't need to to weave weave these in, in at um at all so that will be nice and easy when that that gets there i don't have any steak stitches yet because i'm not at that point <laughs> i will when i get up to the get up to the underarms and then to the for the uh, the collar or the v-neck um, on this but it's really beautiful i usually i try i'm trying to remember to do one or two rows a day uh it gets it can get addictive i also but i find i can't sit and do fair isle <clears throat> knitting like for an extended period of time, my tension just goes, I just kind of like lose my, lose my good tension. And uh, then it just, it just doesn't work well. And the colors aren't, aren't coming out uh, enough. So I, I know, I know myself, I know my knitting habits. So usually what I try to do is try to do a row or two in the morning when I have my coffee. And that seems to kind of get me get me on to the, the to the next the next point so I do have a ways to go but I'm working on it and I'm planning on this being my um being my Rhinebeck one of my Rhinebeck sweaters um this year I'm actually really excited uh, about that we have not been since before the pandemic so this will be this will be really a fun year for it the last um project that I want to show you is super cute and this is one of those ones where I this is actually for um, 
a friend of Sophia, a really great friend of Sophia's from uh, from high school, Megan. Her she has a little boy, and he is two. He's almost two. He is two. I forget, but he's he's just this cute little guy. And um, her mom was a uh, her her mom was a, a friend of a friend of mine when they were in high school. lived in in the Saratoga area, um, and her unfortunately her mom passed away a couple of years ago. And so I'm kind of like. I'm going to see if I can kind of keep up and just make this little guy some sweaters. Now they live in Virginia, so he doesn't need a lot of sweaters in the deep winter. He'll put, they'll, they'll put on. So I think I've made him a vest and a sweater and um, I've got this sweater uh, on the, on the go. I, I actually was knitting a different pattern and I was almost done with it. It was a little cardigan and I just, you know, I got almost to the end of it and I just wasn't really happy with the way it was, it was coming out. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm with patterns. Again, I'm the same way. I'm not like with socks. I'm not necessarily precious about a pattern. I have no problem ripping something out and reusing the yarn. If, uh, if need be, if something is just, isn't making sense or it's not working right, or I don't like it. Sometimes when those things happen in an adult sweater, you can kind of hide them a little bit, or if it was for me, but as a gift and also for a, a little, a smaller sweater, you, you can, you just can see, um, see what, what those problems were. So I did not, um, I, I actually ripped that out. I'm not a big cardigan fan. I don't knit cardigans for myself, so I'm not quite sure why I thought I would enjoy knitting a cardigan for a little one, but I, I really I really did, and I, I wasn't, really, wasn't happy with it. But I'm just using some really basic, um, it's not fully acrylic, but it's half and half so that she doesn't have to worry about this. We can throw this in the, in the washing, washing machine. But it's a super cute little pattern. Um, it is called Mellow Sunday by Lisa Chenery, who is Fragonet um, Yarn Designs on Instagram and on Ravelry. And she designs patterns for little ones. Uh, she has done a couple of adult patterns, kind of um, sized up for some of these patterns. But most of, them, most of her patterns are for babies and toddlers and, and um, uh, little ones. So this is the sweater, if you can see it. It's so cute. It has this honeycomb pattern in here, so it's just a little... Round neck, you'll see that the, the neck is open. That's that will be that will be closed up. Years and years ago, when I started doing um, when I was doing rib patterns, and you had to join in the round, I either saw somewhere or just decided to do this. There's you're just doing a uh, you're doing a rib, so it really doesn't matter. You can start, you know, people people will cast on do a rib try to join it in the round and then it will get twisted. And then you're just, you're out of luck because you can't untwist that once you get too far down. So now what I do basically is just unknit back and forth. So especially with a rib, because you're just knit to purl to back in the front, look exactly the same. And then when I get enough, enough knit <clears throat> that I know where I am, I can see if something is twisted, that's when I'll join in the, in the round. So, you know, just an idea. There's, you know, there's no knitting police out there going, you didn't, you didn't um, join in the round on your first round. Um, there's, no, there's nobody. I'll just weave weave it weave this up, and no one will no one will be the wiser. But I have finished the body now, and it's just really cute. You could you do have the option of continuing on with this, but for this particular pattern, I just left it the way it was originally written, and then it's just stocking out all the way around and a little rib down here at the bottom. And so now I'm going to pick up and do both sleeves, and then it will be finished. And it, this will be perfect time for um, for late fall, uh, early winter. Um, and again, I just think this is I think this is really fun. These patterns for little ones knit up so quickly. So I will be done with this um, fairly fairly shortly. So I'm really I'm really um, uh, I am very very happy with this one. This took me. I probably had been working on the other one for at least a month, and then I just ripped it out. I um, I skeined up the yarn. I just uh, washed, gave it a cold bath uh, wash to take the kinks out of it, let it dry and started knitting again. Absolutely no problem. You would never know that this yarn's been knitted twice at all. Never, ever. Um, and this probably took me, took me a week to get this far. It was just so easy, so quick, such a great pattern. And I'm really, really happy with it. And I'm just excited to get it done and send it, send it off to her and look for a new, <laughs> for my next little pattern um, for, for this little guy. So so those are all of my works in progress. And that's, that's plenty. That's, that's plenty right now. Um, I have two more that I am anticipating doing. So let me tell you about those. Up 
upcoming projects. But first, I forgot I was going to show you <clears throat> one more kind of work in progress, not knitting related. If you'll remember, I when I was a kid, I did counted cross stitch all the time, not embroidery, but counted cross stitch. I really, really, I really liked it. And then when I got older, um, my eyes started to go a little bit. <laughs> I kind of I kind of left that behind and I, I got uh, taken over by uh, by the knitting bug, which was perfectly fine. So um, after you know, we came back from Egypt and I was thinking about, I had been thinking about starting it up again, trying again on a smaller, you know, on a project. Um, because he, you see a lot of people on Instagram um, doing cross stitch, and I was like, you know what, I, I, I bet I could do that again. I'd like to, I'd like to try. They have some really, you know, good lights to go with now. So, so anyway, I found this beautiful um, pattern on. Uh, it's created by Long Dog Samplers, and they're just amazing, um, amazing sampler um, patterns for you. And you didn't, you just buy the pattern. It's just a PDF. You can download it, and it's it's great. And so I, uh, I asked, I found this and I asked for it for Christmas and Sophia got it. And it is a, it is a, um, an Egypt theme piece, but it's done in sections. And so it will be, it will fill this entire piece of cloth, but I'm only at the bottom piece, but I really like this. This is so cool. I'm just, it's just using one color, obviously. And this is the very, the base of the first pyramid. I think there are a couple of other pyramids as you, as you go up. So it's great. I'm really enjoying it. And I have, um, I also asked for at Christmas, one of those neck lights that, um, that you can get that makes a huge difference because you can actually see the needle. You can see, um, you can actually see the holes in the, in the, uh, in the fabric. And that, that has been a life, a life changer. It has made, made everything, all the difference. I should say, I wouldn't really be able to do that. I'd be, I'd be struggling with, um, with this, not, not so much, not being able to see, but just not having the right light at night when, which is most of the time when I <clears throat> do my crafting. Um, cause you can't have too bright a light with everyone else in the room was trying to watch something on TV or a movie. So having the, the neck light, um, works great. It just, it just focuses right in on, on this and I'm able to, able to do this. And that's really why I've gotten, um, I've really gotten fairly far on this. I mean, it's been two years. I've had this going for two years now. It'll be two years in Christmas. December. So yeah, a year and a half. So it's not like it's going to be done anytime soon, but I'm not in any rush for this either. I'm really just in, I'm just enjoying the process. I tend to pick it up and I'll work on it for a few nights and then I'll put it down for a week and pick it up again a, a few nights later. And I really, I'm just enjoying seeing the picture uh, emerge, um, emerge on it. So I just thought I'd give you an update on that. I'm super um, super happy with that. So the, um, the other, actually I have three, up, not three upcoming projects. I'm not going to be able to finish everything, but, uh, Kay Jones of the bakery bears came out with a new pattern called the fairground socks. And they are this, um, lovely scalloped, um, pattern that is designed specifically for self-striping yarn. So I'm thinking, in fact, actually, Sophia and I, uh, after I'm done today, this afternoon, we might go, um, go down to the yarn shop and see if I can find some self-striping yarn that I, um, that, you know, that, that appeals to me. And then I can, <clears throat> I can cast, <clears throat> I'll have them ready to cast on when I finish the, uh, the hand towel. Um, they're really pretty. I'll try to put a picture up here. Super pretty. I'm really excited to, to get those um, underway. My second project that is um, needle adjacent, as they say, is called the Forest Pillow. And this is the picture of it right here. And this again is through Knitography. So she's having a mini knit along. We were able to purchase, this is a Garn, Rauma Garn um, magazine that we were able to purchase from her along with the yarn. It has really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful patterns in it, but they're in Norwegian. So, but uh, she, we we bought this. She, she's going to be, again, she's going to be doing this pattern as well. And so she's sent us, got permission to translate the pattern. And so she sent us the translation. And if you have the yarn, um, you're ready to go. And so my yarn came, I have that, and it's going to be really cute. So we're, we're using the uh, Rauma Garn Lamel. So this is, what is this? This is, yes, I don't, I don't know, but it's wool. <laughs> it's hundred percent wool. So these are my two colors. Those are the colors that are um, uh, required in the pattern. So I'm really looking forward to this. I got a, um, I got a pillow form 
So that, that, that has come as well. So that also is giving me some, uh, you know, some encouragement. I think probably what I'll do is I will, I will make myself finish the arms on that little sweater and then I'll be able to, I'll be able to start to start to start this one. So I'm pretty, I'm actually excited about this. This will, this will be pretty easy. It's a little bit of a chart. Um, but again, that'll be, um, that'll be really, it'll fun. It'll be, go quickly because it's fingering weight yarn. So I'm really, I'm looking forward to that as well. It'll be a nice thing to have on the, on the couch in the winter time and at Christmas. It'll be really beautiful. The third project that, uh, I am going to do is called the Ingrid and it is by um, Tone Lonig, and I'll put some, I'll put an information on her. I'm not sure if the, how readily available the pattern is, because we purchased it. We have purchased it from um, from Patricia of Nitography. So again, this is going to be, I believe, it's going to be an autumn class for this uh, for this um, for this sweater, Norwegian sweater. Now this one is a cardigan. Famous last words. So we'll see. How I do, but it's really beautiful. I like the colors. Um, I'm in the process of getting the yarn for the just the colors that that are in the in the pattern, and then she will be um, she'll be setting up the class, so we'll be able to start uh, start knitting um, on that. But that will be that will be you know a deep winter um, knit and be an, another epic sweater. Um, so I'm really looking forward. Um, I'm looking forward to that. So those are my three upcoming projects unless something else falls into my, <laughs> into my, into my line of view, um, uh, into my knitting dream world. Um, but yeah, so for right now, that's what I am doing and I am so looking forward to it. I have not, um, I I'm just doing the spinning right now for that, the, the major blanket that I'm, I'm doing. So I haven't done any, uh, any interesting colored spinning yet. I'm probably going to just stick to, I'm not doing much spinning at all in this, in this weather that we're having right now, but I will probably stick to uh, pretty much just doing, um, doing the, um, the background colors for that, for that blanket. I do have some lovely Rolex from Hikari Handmade that I have not delved into yet. And I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to doing that. And I discovered another braid of, of fiber that I have that I didn't realize that I had either. So I'll look forward to doing that as, uh, as, as well. So once the, uh, you know, once the weather gets a little bit cooler, I'll, I'll, I'll pick that up. Um, I'll pick my spinning up, uh, sp spinning up again and, and get, uh, get, get back to that. Cause I do love it. Um, all right. So now let's move on to some of what's been happening. So what has been happening here since the last time I recorded a podcast? Um, probably a lot. I'm not sure if I'll remember <laughs> everything, but I'll try to give you a little bit of a, a little bit of an update. Um, work is actually going well. If you've watched me before, you know, we have had, we have had an awful, an awful year and a half. Uh, we just lost staff, you know, in the great resignation that happened in this country. We had a really hard time hiring new staff. Um, and luckily, luckily, we have now been in the process. We've hired two new financial aid counselors at the basic incoming level, and we have actually uh, hired two new uh, two new directors. So we have a director of financial literacy, and now we have a director of compliance. They will be starting over the next couple of weeks, and I am so excited. I'm excited for our our direct, our VP. Um, she's it, she just needs needs the help. Um, we've, we've hired a, um, a, a, a data <clears throat> processing person as well, who works with me doing all the background on the, um, the Elucian, uh, banner system that we, that we use. So that has, that has just made all the difference in the world. And I'm just really, really excited about it. And I'm very, very happy because I, I know that there are some folks who work in financial aid who, who, um, who do watch me and you're going to know what I'm talking about because this year, upcoming year right now, we're in 23-24, starts in September for the financial aid run. Next year for the 24-25 year, all bets are off the table. They're doing, uh, in this country, we have the, it's called the FAFSA form, the free application for federal student aid. And anyone who goes to college can fill out that form. And that gives you um, potentially eligibility for um, a federal Pell Grant, which is grant money that you don't have to repay some other grant money. And the Stafford loan programs that we uh, that we have um, available for students. So if you want to be eligible for any of those, you have to fill out this form. It's a very long form. They come up with uh, the federal government um, takes all the information in. They come up with a formula and they um, they 
that information comes back to the schools with what's called an estimated family contribution. And then we have a, a financial aid budget minus the family contribution. And then and that's what's left is basically what you can award to students for, um, for, for the year. So we have been using that for who knows how long. And all of our major systems are set up to utilize that same information. So all the information that the federal government gets on this form gets sent to each school um, in, um, uh, in data elements, and then that gets uploaded into their system, so into our banner, um, Elysium banner system. So that all comes in. That's all worked for years. We have all kinds of reports that are set up that way with all of the, the different mnemonics that are there, etc. This for the next year, for the 24-25 year, the um, federal government has decided that they're doing what they're calling FAFSA simplification, which is not a bad thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all. The FAFSA will have much fewer questions. However, at this, the same time that they're doing this, they're changing all of the mnemonics for things. So they're changing and what we used to term an EFC, estimated family contribution. That will now be called an SAI or a student aid index. It's a better a better name for that that particular data element. But at the same time, that means that everything in our system has to change to pick up that mnemonic rather than the old mnemonic. And at the same time, as I said, they're changing the questions, they're simplifying the questions. So every single piece of data that comes into our system now that we utilize to do our financial aid awards will be changing. The formula is changing. Um, there are so many questions that they don't, the Department of Education doesn't even really have full answers for us yet on, on the questions that we're having as, as financial aid professionals. So our, the companies that do these, our, our big um, data processing, like uh, so we, as I said, we Banner, Lucian is the large company that uses, that produces a Banner product. And Banner is what we use to do integration across the entire campus. So the registrar, student accounts, financial aid, everybody uses Banner. So that financial aid information, that FAFSA information comes into Banner, uploads into Banner. So basically, Lucian will be working this summer to change all of the data fields in Banner. So next, before we can begin to process next year, which normally is in December, everything will change. Every single thing will change. And so if you can imagine what that is like in the world of IT, when they start changing things, things break down and you don't know that they're broken until you try to use them. So that is why I am so excited that we actually have some really great people as counselors and we have these other higher level positions that we've been able to fill and we have, we have the data person that's going to be helping us with this because it is, you know, it is, it is going to be, it is, is going to be crazy in a whole different way that last year was crazy for, for us. So I'm really happy that we were able to, it would be impossible if we weren't able to have all these additional, the, these new, new staff. Um, so if you're a financial aid professional, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So next year, you know, you're going to see me sweating bullets. It's just, it's going to be, it's just going to be, it's going to be, I can't, I don't even know how it's going to be because it's going to be so, it's going to be so crazy. But at the moment we can breathe a little bit and I'm really happy with that. And I'm happy we have some new folks um, starting, um, starting this, 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 this month. Um, I'm start. I'm going to start to make a couple of visits to uh, back home to Saratoga, um, maybe once every couple of uh, every couple of months. Um, you know, my dad is uh, having a hard time with his eyesight, so um, <clears throat> you know, and and so because he's doing that, my mom is doing a lot of stuff. Now, that's not to say I, I have two brothers, I have sister in laws, I have family there that are helping them out, but um, and because I'm so far away. Um, you know, Mark and I were talking and what I'm going to try to do, and I already did it once. I'm going to try to go out there for four or five days. You know, I'll cook for them. I'll just give my mother a break from kind of watching him go down the stairs and, and you know, my watch my dad and, you know, helping him do things. So it will be, you know, it's a little bit of a break for her. I get to spend time with them, um, with both of them, but I get to, you know, hang out with my, hang out with my dad. They have a lovely swimming pool <laughs> there. So I'm going to start to try to do that. I did that once already. I think I will do that at some point in um, in August again uh, as well. So that'll be that'll be nice. And then I get to see my sister-in-law Tracy. And last time I went uh, last month, um, you know, all the 
my two brothers and my two sister-in-laws and, and myself, we all went out to dinner. It was really, really nice. Got to see my nieces and nephews. And that was, that was really fun. Um, Sophia's book is in the um, stage where she's done her first set of edits. So the agents have it back again. They are looking at it. They are having a, I think they're having a sensitivity reader read it. And then they're also looking to see if they want to make any additional edits and they'll be getting back to her. And once those final edits are done, then it will be able to go out. They'll, they'll take it out to submission to the publishers. So it's a kind of a waiting game right now. And it's hard. It's hard because, and I keep remind, I have to keep reminding her, you know, you were, you've been waiting for this for so long and you, you've gone through the process where you were getting rejections all the time. And now you're at the next stage of waiting and you just have to kind of wait. She's been writing. She has a whole other book that she's been, um, she's been writing anyway. So once this one um, hopefully gets sold, uh, then she'll be able to, um, you know, give them another one to, to look at um, as well. So things are moving. It's just, it's a very, very slow process, but she is on the next level now. And so, so it's very, very exciting. She's going to be doing some traveling. She's going to Canada to visit a friend uh, in a couple of weeks and she'll be there for a week. So that will be nice. She is also going to go to Disney for a few, um, for a few days, I think in August sometime. So that'll be, that'll be really fun. I think there's a Halloween festival that starts up there. And so she really wanted to go. So she's just going by herself. She's going down to Disney and, and that will be, <clears throat> that will be, that will be great. We had some trauma with our cat, our cute little cat Wednesday. Um, she, uh, got stuck at her neck stuck, you know, in the, just in those little paper bags that have like a little, um, raffia kind of a handle on them. You get them like in a bookstore or wh wherever. And the cat somehow, I think we, I think we got it actually from the, the knitting store and the cat somehow was in Sophia's room and cat somehow got, went, wanted to go into the bag and, but she stuck her neck through the handle to get into the bag. And then she couldn't get the handle off of her neck. And she freaked. She freaked out, as you can imagine. I mean, she has no clue what was going on. She just was, I mean, we realized, we realized that something was wrong because she was like running down the stairs and running back up the stairs and under the bed and back out. And she ended up at one point kind of, we have these really steep stairs from Sophia's and she was running so fast, she kind of tumbled down the stairs. And so the poor, the poor thing. And so she ended up under Sophia's bed and she was just all hunched up and growling. And so Sophia had to just like really talk her down and get it to the point. She had, she had ripped enough of the bag that, that Sophia was able to gently get it off over her head, but she was, she was traumatized. I don't think she came out from under the bed for a couple of days. And then she was, um, just like growling and wanting to attack Sophia. Like she would come up to her and want comfort and then she would want to attack her at the same time. So Sophia took her to the vet because, you know, we're like, you, you need to figure out how to deal with this issue and also see if she hurt herself. And so the vet kind of made the, they couldn't, they, they had to, they had to have her come in and they had to put her under sedation because they can't, they, they, she was feral. I mean, she, they couldn't, they just couldn't do anything with her, but they did, put her under sedation and they did all checks on her. They checked her mouth, her teeth. They, you know, checked that she didn't break anything. They um, did all the blood work on her. So um, it was a little bit of an expense for Sophia, but she feels a lot better now because she knows. And basically what the vet said is that she probably um, in the running and falling and tumbling and trying to get that off, she probably strained her some muscles in her back. And so that was what was hurting her. And so, and so, yes, she's coming to the person who, who you, usually gives her comfort, but doesn't understand why she can't take this pain away. And then it flips in her brain to, I need to attack because I'm really angry about this, about this pain. So they gave her some pain medication for a couple of days. They actually had her put the, put one of those pheromone things in the, you know, while it puts out, um, calming pheromones for cats that seemed to help a lot. They did give her, um, some, some cat calm down medication, <laughs> Prozac for cats. I think Sophia tried that for a couple of days and that, that seemed to help as well. And then, um, and luckily, luckily after about a week and the vet said it would take a week to two weeks. Luckily after about a week, it, um, she kind of started to come back to herself. Cause I mean, Sophia was really worried, you know, and I was too, because you can't, you just can't have a cat who's attacking you. Um, you know, who, you're the person and they're attacking you all the time. You just can't, you just can't have that. Um, so we were, we were really worried about it, but she seemed to come out of it and, and all is well now. So we're really, really happy. And at the same time, Sophia knows that she's completely, 
completely healthy. So now every time we bring one of those bags in, boy, they go right into the garbage or into the recycling. They, you know, can't keep those around for, for her. Um, so that was, uh, you know, that was kind of a crazy, a crazy couple of weeks that, um, that we had. Um, I am having my cataracts it changed out. Thank goodness. It, it is time. My right eye, I can, I can, I can still see, but my right eye is, you, you know, that there's a cataract and a cataract is the lens is, um, is getting cloudy. And it, it really, what it looks like is looking through kind of a piece of plastic that's been all scratched up. So lights are, are like, I can't really drive very well at night because the lights are too bright. I see kind of a double image, um, in, on, uh, through that, through that eye, um, glasses can't correct it anymore. Really, you know, the, everything's fuzzy, whether it's far away or whether it's close up. I, I have one in my, my uh, left eye as well. That is not as bad, but we're going to have that one done too. So what will happen over, I've already been, you have to go for like two appointments where they do all kinds of crazy measurements of your eye. And then they, they set it up. It probably won't be for a couple of months, but they set it up where you have one done, the worst one done first and then two to three weeks later, you have the second one done and they take out that the cloudy lens and they replace it with a, with a new lens. And that lens will be calibrated to see distance for me to see distance. So I, I should be able to drive without glasses. I'll have to go back to the DMV and <clears throat> get that taken off my license, but um, I should be able to see distance. And then that way I'll, I should be able to see the TV. I have no problem. You know, right now I can't, I can, I can see the closed captioning. We have it on because we watch a lot of British shows and Mark can't understand the accent sometimes, but anyway, but I can't really see, see that now. Um, but I, I should be able to, um, and then I will only need glasses for up closer for reading. So I'm, I am, it has gotten a lot worse over the last year. So I really am happy that we're going to do that. I, this, you know, there are millions of these operations done each year and they're just really quick and easy now. So I, I, I have no, um, I've got no anxiety about having it done. I'm really, really looking forward to, to getting it, getting it done. And then going back down to just having um, reading glasses, it will be, it will be delightful. I feel like I'm going to be like this whole new person being able to see, cause right now I'm like trying to look at the, <laughs> having to make things big on the, on the computer screen so I can, you know, see them easily. And, you know, everything on the screen is like tiny, tiny. I'm like, oh. So um, I am really looking forward to, I'm looking forward to having, actually having those, those two procedures, two procedures done. Um, so we'll see when, when that, um, when that happens, we are, Mark and I are going to go on a vacation at the end of September to Cape Cod. We, um, got an Airbnb down there. It looks really nice and it will be in sandwich where we used to live in East sandwich. So it's all familiar to us. We, you know, we like to go back there. It was a really beautiful place. Um, and you know, as I said, we know where the grocery stores are. We know where the restaurants that we like, we know the beaches that we like. So I'm really looking forward to that. And at the same time as that is done, we <laughs> everything happens at once. We're going to have, Sophia is going to go with the cat and stay at my mother-in-law's house for a week because we are having a company come in and redo the, um, the floors. We have really beautiful wooden floors. I'll, I'll try to, at the end of this, um, of the podcast, I'll try to put in some video of the, of the floors that we have. When, uh, the people bought this house in the, in, back in early fifties and, and, to, and went to restore it, all the floors are, they're beautiful wide board panel, um, pine panels. And they basically took them all up and they flipped them over and they redid that fresh side that no one had ever walked on. And so nothing has been done to the floors since then, besides being, you know, but kind of being cleaned. And Mark has been, he's ever since we moved here, he's been desperate to have this done. So this was a good time. We're going to have all of the floors done in the, on the first floor. We're going to have the top risers of the stairs. Right now we have those plastic pieces on them. This used to be a rental house. And so they, they had to have plastic on for, you know, for um, um, insurance purposes. But in, if you took it off now, it's just all scratched up. So they're going to top do the top of the risers. They're going to do the little bit of a um, hallway that we have here. And they're going to do Sophia's, uh, Sophia's floors as well. So they're not going to do our bedroom and they're not going to do the little office because that's a painted floor um, as it as it is. Uh, but that means that all of our furniture has to either come into our bedrooms, that those little rooms that we aren't being done or they need to go out. So we're probably going to get one of those pods and we're going to have a local mover put it. A friend of ours who lives um, just a couple of blocks down said that we could put it on his rental property. Not a problem. So that he has a pretty big, um, pretty big um, 
uh, driveway area. So we'll, we'll put that there and they'll put the furniture in the pod. And then um, this company will just come in and, and, and do it while we're away. And then we'll have everything put back when we, when we get back. So that will be quite the, quite the experience. Um, I'm, I'm sure, but I'm, it will be beautiful. Mark will be very, very happy um, to have it to have it done uh, and done properly. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what we're looking forward to. We had a beautiful Fourth of July. The weather was nice. It wasn't. It some, one of the days was rainy, but actually on the Fourth of July it turned out to be pretty good. So we were happy with that. We had a really unexpected um, neighborhood barbecue that was really nice that we got invited to. So that was uh, super fun. The um, Marblehead to Halifax boat race is, is happening this weekend. I, I don't think there's been any noise, but if there has been, it's because there's stuff going on in the parking lot. They had a big band there last night. So the music was going until 11 o'clock last night, but the race starts tomorrow. It's a, um, it's a big sailboat race from Marblehead up to Halifax, Nova Scotia. So all of the ra- the sailors are here with their boats and they're here for a couple of days and then they will head off tomorrow morning and they'll head up on a race up to Halifax, Nova Scotia. This race only happens, I think it happens every, is it every other year? This year it's from Marblehead to Halifax. I think maybe the next one will be from Halifax to Marblehead. I can't remember how, I'm not, we're not really involved in it, but I can't remember. But it's that's what's kind of going on now for the end of the 4th of, 4th of July uh, week. So once this whole thing leaves tomorrow morning, It'll, it'll be busy, but it'll go back to being the normal, the normal busy, um, the normal busy here. So that'll be good. I'll take a few days off here, um, here and there over the summer. And um, yeah, give me some time to work <laughs> on all these, all these works in progress. So anyway, well, thank you for, uh, for joining me today. I appreciate it. If you enjoy this, um, click the like and su- subscribe um, button. And um, as I said, I will try to Put, I'll put some normal pictures at the end, but I'll try to take some pictures and some video maybe of our floor so you can see what, what it's like before and then you can see what it will be like um, be like afterwards. But anyway, thank you so much for enjoying uh, for joining me today. And remember, it's just knitting. Bye.